Hello and welcome, my name is Christopher Hole from ChristopherHole.com and um, welcome to this video. I just want to um, sort of uh, talk about in this video um, the effects of, um, of meat um, on the body because as a sort of trainer of trainers um, in the health and fitness industry um, meat is very, you could say, highly regarded um, as, a, as a good source of protein. Um, and what I can't deny is that there's the amount of protein in it. You know, I'm not going to say there's no protein in meat because that would be silly of me. Um, so, in that sense, you know, it's it's a good source of food. Um, but what doesn't maybe get taken into consideration a lot is the sort of the outer effects of it. I don't want to say the after effects, but like the outer effects, because the immediate effects are, well, I put protein in my body, my body therefore gets protein. Um, but we need to look a little bit more broader than that. We need to look a little bit more at the sort of the whole system, the, the whole holistic system. What's the knock-on effect of everything? Um, and I found a paper which has been quite useful, um, and it's called the uh, excess dietary protein can adversely affect bone um, and obviously the, the key word here is excess so um, we've got to understand first of all what is excess um, now I'm not going to go down that road um, I just want to explain um, sort of the the effects of it because Excess, fat, excess uh, dietary protein can adversely affect bone, as it says on in the title. Um, but any amount of um, acid going into the body can affect um, the bones. It can affect various other systems of the body as well. So, um, enough of me uh, sort of chatting away. Um, let's get into it. So, food... Foods such as fish and meat have, have a high potential for renal acid load. So what that basically means is, um, if you were to read the study, you can type that into Google and read the study if you want to, um, but they talk about a foods having an acid ash. So when the foods break down, a, an acid is, is, is left. Um, and as we well know, you may have seen other videos of mine, um, we know that the body is kind of alkaline in its design or neutral in its design or very slightly alkaline in, in its design. Um, the blood is um, sort of maintained around 7.365. The internal fluids of the body, the fluids inside the cell and outside the cell, they're regulated around uh, the same pH. So if we put then an acidic solution or an acidic component into those solutions, more alkali buffers need to go into the solution to um, to buffer the acids, to neutralise the acids so they don't compromise um, the the system. Um, because if a, a human body becomes too acidic, it starts to get symptoms of illness. It starts to get things like osteoporosis, to name one of them, kidney issues, um, liver issues, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and what we also know is it takes 20 parts alkali to neutralise one part acidity. So that's why I say any amount of acidity going into the body will constitute a lot of alkali buffers being used, if that makes sense. So that's sort of the background um, to it all. Um, and then what it goes on to say is urinary calcium nearly doubled in the higher protein diet. When the body is challenged with a dietary acid load, the kidneys excrete more acidic urine and the organism also turns to the skeletal, uh, the skeleton to, uh, for additional buffers. So, what that's saying is um, urinary calcium um, increased when you eat meat. So you eat meat, um, that creates an, ac an ac acid, acid waste. Um, calcium is an alkaline mineral which is sent to, to neutralise it. So once it's then been neutralised, it is then ready to leave the body. So all this calcium leaves the body. Now, to start with, the calcium comes from the blood. If the blood then becomes depleted, and it's not coming in through diet, it needs to be taken from somewhere else. 
So the organism also turns to the skeleton for additional buffers. So if there isn't enough calcium in the blood to cope with it, it'll turn to the skeleton and take it from there. Then the blood needs to be topped up. If that doesn't come in from diet, it'll also take it from the skeleton to maintain the, the pH of the blood. So alkali buffers, whether chemical salts or dietary fruits and vegetables, high in potassium, reverse acid-induced ob obligatory ur uh, urinary calcium loss. A bit of a mouthful. Um, so these buffers, so by putting in um, vegetables, by putting in potassium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, all these different alkali minerals, the acid, um, or sorry, the urinary calcium loss is reduced. So uh, we conclude that excessive dietary protein from foods with high potential renal acid loads adversely affects bone unless buffered by the consumption of alkali-rich foods or supplements. So by putting the sort of the general gist of this story is by putting acid foods in the body uses its alkali reserves from the blood from the tissues so from the skin if you've got bad skin that's another um, buffer or another way of the body buffering and um, it'll take it from the skin um, if it doesn't take it from the skin it can take it from the bones then we get things um, you know we start to lead ourselves on to osteoporosis and things like that um, but what we've got to understand is um, first of all it takes it from the blood if we haven't got enough in the blood, it'll take it from the skeleton. If it continually keeps coming in, so if meat continually comes in, cheeses, eggs, fried foods, all these sort of dirty acidic foods, if they keep coming in, the alkali minerals will continually be used um, in the body to neutralise them. Um, and because our alkaline uh, body is alkaline in its design with regards to the, the blood and the fluids of the body, um, if they become compromised, then it's going to start taking alkali minerals from the tissues. And if the tissues become um, compromised, that's when we start getting uh, symptoms of illness. Okay, So if we want to avoid symptoms of illness or reduce our risk of symptoms of illness, then um, it could be recommended that we, that we eat more alkali-rich foods such as green vegetables, um, low-sugar fruits, um, sort of... Uh, better alternatives for things like pasta and rices in the form of buckwheat, lentils, um, quinoa and such foods. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this has been useful. Um, please leave some feedback, it'd be great to hear it. Um, so my name's Chris from ChristopherHole.com. I will speak to you soon.